Lee and Robbie Riggs. Finally, a place where you can get both perspectives on challenges in the workplace. From a boomer <laughs> and a millennial. The counter mentor is the new leader. Join us as we show you how to blend the very best of both generations, young and old. This is Counter Mentors, and here are your hosts, Kelly and Robbie Riggs. Hey, hey, hey. What's going on? Welcome to the Counter Mentors Show. We're excited you're here. It is a beautiful July 11th, and we are happy you are here. As you guys know, this is the place where we help you navigate the chaotic, ridiculous four-generation workplace. Uh, we're excited to be here, and uh, w- welcome to the show, man. We had a break last week. We all enjoyed America and celebrated. Uh, I know the Pops was probably wearing a uh, USA tank top and, like, what, straw hat is my guess. Oh, showing off my guns, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, hey, th- this is a show where we have fun. And we try to fix all the problems that those boomers created for us in the modern workplace. Oh, I mean, that's really what we do. Wait a second. Okay, I, I, I decided in our week off last week. Hey, welcome, by the way. Find us at countermentors.com. I decided in our week off that I'm I'm done with being a doormat. I mean, you've been running all over me, and I, I'm I'm done with that. Hey, uh, the truth today hurts. something truth is going to be wrong with you. I, I, I mean, sorry, millennials. Something. <laughs> okay, so me, so me. Hey, we're excited you're here. Welcome to the show. We we love that we have. Folks joining us on Blab, whether you're listening to the podcast on the road, uh, we're getting lots of great feedback. We're really enjoying it, having fun. This is show 11, Pops. We yeah, are, show 11. We are above double digits, so we're excited. And before we jump into today, which I'm pumped about because being one of those touchy-feely, soft, love when everybody comes together kind of guys, you know I love you know I love me some team building. You know I love me some team building. <laughs> Uh, but we do know that team like building to hold hands around a campfire and oh, sing kumbaya and, and, and sway like this. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's great. So I'm, I'm super pumped because I, we all know that team building can be an absolute train wreck. Um, there was a whole episode of the office about it, which we'll talk about later. Um, but we're really excited. But before we do that, uh, a, a couple of housekeeping notes here. First and foremost, you heard the pop say it over there. Kelly Riggs, follow him on Twitter at Kelly Riggs. Uh, and, uh, your boy, Boston Rob is actually from Seattle today. I got a beautiful view uh, of the mountains here in Seattle. Uh, man, you working went from one coast to the other. You, you're a man of the world, aren't you? I'm Gee, all man. over the place, man. Working with a client out here, so having a great time. But of course, carving out time for the Counter Mentors show. Um, follow us on Twitter at Counter Mentors. We'd love to hear from you. Ideas, opinions, you know, disagree with us. We we enjoy that. Uh, remember, all positive reviews come to me. All negative reviews go to the pops. Send us an email, kr at countermentors.com. We're excited you're here. Make sure you check out our website countermentors.com listen to past episodes watch past episodes uh we're having fun and you know most importantly pops we got to tie a bow on our episode last week which was uh, we had a good time about we did something have about a good time meetings you know, he, are awesome you know, here's what, what was the name of it was it meetings uh, are great? yeah i freaking hate meetings oh, yeah. That, that, yeah, yeah episode number 10 <laughs> it was pretty awesome well you know the thing about it is is it's one of the more common complaints that we get. We do a lot of uh, surveys and engagement surveys of employees. We talk to employees of our clients a lot of times, and they almost universally, I mean, it's crazy how big the number is. They absolutely hate the way their company does meetings. Last week, we just, we absolutely tore it apart, and yet we <laughs> rebuilt it and showed you how you could do it the right way. And by the way, we're going to put out a, a neat little ebook here in the next, uh, hopefully, next few weeks so that uh, you can download and you can have some tips and uh, techniques on how to do your your meetings better. Listen, boomers, um, millennials just don't do meetings well. They can't think for themselves. You got to kind of hold their hand. You got to work them along. So we're going to give you guys some tips on how to accommodate these poor kids who just (laughs) – what? I, I I thought you were gonna like do the do the right thing there and be like boomers, we don't do a good job, we're not prepared. No, we just no, show I'm up. Done with that. But, 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 but no, you you oh, guys are such sissies, we gotta accommodate you. Hey, okay, step one, every meeting, make sure you recognize someone for you know coming to work like three out of five days that week on oh, time. Great idea. And make sure they get a little trophy and a uh, Twinkie. Mm, mm-hmm. Twinkie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. uh, you know, for for all for all of the the listeners at home, um, who most are millennials because we're awesome. Um, we if if you didn't get a chance to listen last week, go back and listen. It's it's a great listen. Uh, listen to it on the pod. Rewatch it on Blab. But- hey, yeah, do what do what we do, Robbie. Download it from iTunes. Subscribe to iTunes. Download it to iTunes to your to your smartphone. 
you know, and uh, connect by Bluetooth in your car or, you know, direct connect or something. It is, it's great. It's great listening. If nothing else, you get yeah. a good laugh before work in the morning. Right. And then you can go <laughs> yes, use right. our line on those millennials or, or boomers or what, whatever. There it was boomers now. And, and like we promised, we did upload uh, all those files to our episode page. So definitely go check that out. And remember pops, the biggest thing, you know, we talked about this last week, the biggest thing you, you can't run an effective meeting without an agenda. You have to have a plan. You can't multitask. You have to be engaged. Um, I mean, we had we had a great show, and, and it, it was a lot of fun. So uh, as, as the pops mentioned, we got a great ebook coming out uh, sooner rather than later. So be, definitely be on the lookout for that. Um, but, you know, pops, I really think more than anything, what we decided last week is that after looking at all the statistics, the amount of time people spend in meetings is freaking ridiculous. I mean, you know, I, 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 I had that even conversation. That, crazy. Yeah, I had that conversation with uh, some guys this week, and they were like, "I had, I had like no clue." I mean, just think about it. You know, you got Mind six, blowing. eight, ten people in a meeting for an hour, hour and a half, and you don't get anything done. Then you have to come back and do it again. Then you you don't put out any notes, so you got to go talk to everybody. I mean, yep. that stuff starts to pile up in a hurry. Yeah. And the worst part is, is it's a serious driver of disengagement because people just get tired of it. So they start looking for reasons not to be there. They start looking for reasons to be late, which is one of the single biggest challenges in meetings. You brought it up. People book meetings at the top of the hour, hour after hour. They're always yeah. going to be late. And by the end of the day, son, they're they're 45 minutes late. It, it's terrible. And uh, just as a teaser, again, go watch that show. But uh, $37 billion annually in unproductive just meetings. a little bit of money being hey, spent. That's, I mean, you, you could buy the UFC like nine times if you, if you wanted to for that, for that number. So, yes, indeed, yeah, you could. Yeah. So, uh, for those of you that missed that, uh, the UFC, the the uh, mixed martial arts uh, organization, league, I don't, whatever you want to call it, it was just bought for $4 billion. Uh, yeah, and that's after well. Dana White and his partner bought it for two million dollars in 2000 so that's a decent turn return on their investment so i i, th I think they did okay uh, overall on that investment so uh, hey we're ha we're happy you're here we hope you all had a wonderful fourth of july uh, i got to celebrate it in boston the pops was watching the fireworks uh, at the mothership at counter mentors world headquarters in uh, broken air oklahoma so we, yes, had, sir. Uh, we had a good week off uh, the pops didn't work on his tan as you can tell i'm looking ravishing as ever as you can obviously tell and um we're, we're really excited to talk today about team building you, Man, you know, I, I don't I just don't understand why boomers think you guys are self-absorbed. I don't get that. I never get that from you. I, 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 <laughs> you get me. Now I feel like we're connecting. Yeah, yeah we, I, we, we are. We're connect. Hey, by the way, before we get started on today's show, which is going to be killer, absolutely looking forward to team building is a train wreck. We're going to tell you why. <laughs> uh, well, hey, want to make sure we pimp next week's show. Next week, we're going to have a local guy on. We are, yeah, but he's kind of worldwide famous. His name is David Burkus. He's got a new book out called Under New Management. He is a professor at Oral Roberts University in the business department, and he is the bomb TEDx speaker. You can go check him out on YouTube. Oh, yeah. But we're going to have him in, son, and we're going to talk about, quote, the new millennial approved millennial workplace. Approved. Stamp, yes. of, stamp of approval. And you know, Pops, it's a special show next week because it'll be our first show that we do live in person, the two of us. We'll both, we'll be, both be sitting in world headquarters. We'll both be in the world headquarters. I'll bring my own microphone. Um, it's going to, I can't even imagine the technical issues we're going to have next week. We're trying to make things, I mean, it's going to be a nightmare. It's well, you know what's going to happen? Nightmare. I'm going to end up like sitting in a different part of the office on my laptop. Because I think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm actually going to put you in another office in the conference room or something. That's right. And, and put you on a computer. I don't want you in here because you'll learn all my tips and techniques and tricks. By the way, hey, we, did, we forgot to tell you, as we dive into today's episode, always our title sponsor is Job Pack. And we love the guys. They give you the power of a recruiting company. In one simple online tool, you get access to top, top candidates in seconds, and that's over 100 million candidates. They're plugged into companies like Indeed and many others. They've got a unique algorithm, a search engine that takes what you're looking for, pairs it up, finds you exactly the right people. You provide the job description. They do the rest, and it was created by former recruiters who understand that there's got to be a better way of doing recruiting, and this is it. And hey, right here, on counter mentors, you can get three or 30 days free, free, real just, free, just for being on the show. So That's you right. go to our bit.ly link, bit.ly forward slash job packed. Make sure the J and the P are capitalized. That's important. And boomer, if you have no idea what a bit.ly link is, go find a millennial in, in the house. <laughs> They'll figure it out for you. <laughs> that bit never gets old. Never gets I old. had to teach you how to do it though. Well, I that, that's true. That's I, true. One that, thing, 
one thing we love about our boys at Job Pact is it's recruiting for non-recruiters. So it's it, they, they do an awesome, awesome job. That so part never gets old. It never gets old. You, <laughs> that bit never gets old. <laughs> you, you you love it when I run down my brothers, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we we don't have any fun on the show. All right. So one thing that uh, I, we want to kick off uh, this episode: team building is a train wreck. By saying a few things. First of all, the idea of teaming that's a, that's a very academic word, but the idea of teaming is incredibly important. We're not here to argue that. We we think that be, building a collaborative, uh, engaged team is absolutely critical to your company's success. Having hey, 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 have you ever heard have you ever heard this? Forming, storming, norming. Have you heard that? I, I feel like you're quoting a John Grisham novel right now. No, um, no, it's, it's 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 the steps that the you mentioned academia. They've there's there's the steps that first you have to form the the storm the team storm brainstorm I guess come up with a team then you have to form it, then you have to create the norms for the team. Oh, uh, clearly your Imba didn't cover some of the really critical. You, you don't forming. think that we learned forming, storming, norming, come on, or storming, forming, norming, come on, come yeah. on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've heard of that. Sure. Yeah. Come on. I read, I read Harvard business review. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Have it. Um, no. So, so we believe very, very heavily in, in the teams and the importance of teams. We also believe in the importance of engaged and um, uh, cohesive teams. So, Please, right off the bat, we want to say we are not saying in any way, shape, or form that team building is not important. So that, that that's not the objective of the show. So no. if, if if you're listening in, and you're like, man, I'm excited. I'm an introvert. I hate team building. I can't wait to have all these reasons why team building is terrible. Mm, we're gonna kind of talk about that yeah, today. Well, but here's what we're gonna do. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna kind of get into that. We're gonna explain why they hate it and why if you're doing it that way, you deserve what you get. So hey, hang in there, introvert. We're looking for, we're looking to help you out. Um, we'll be there in a second. We'll get there in a second. Yeah. 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 The, typical, the typical boss is a D personality, like me, by the way. Disc Dr personality. Driver. Yep. Yeah, I'm driver. a driver. I'm a doer. Dominant. I'm a, yep. Dominant personality. Yep. Yeah, yep. I get that a lot. But anyway, guys like me, ladies like me with that kind of personality typically are, are more common. They're not exclusive, but they're more common in leadership. And those yep. are the people, Robbie, that love to do Team building activities. And of course, that makes all the introverts want to jump off the building. So, That's right. I, so I ran across this great article this week. I, I got to share this with you. This is a go right here. If you're on Blab, you can see it right there. It's called Paintballing the Boss. I, I have to tell you, I have to tell you, when when I would look, we were looking over the show notes, I saw the title of that article and the title alone, talk about clickbait. I was in. I, I was like, I got to read that article. It's awesome. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and by the way, this was an NPR episode. Uh, yeah, it was a report on NPR, but it's uh, paintballing the boss, office team building ex exercises gone bad. So office team building <laughs> exercise, and quoting from the article, now, exercise often create lasting memories, just not necessarily ones you want to remember. We're going to share three with you that, that you'll laugh yourself silly un unless you've done it. And then yeah, you right. go, yeah, exactly. Several years ago, this one guy worked at a health food store in Iowa. He remembers store management stringing up a donkey pinata to this pump is, up the workers. Oh, yeah, this so, is great. Pinned to its chest was a name tag of a rival store. Yeah, the so you store see across where this the street is going. or something. Yeah, yeah. They said, like, we're, we're going to, like, beat the crud out of the competition, right? So figuratively and literally yeah. destroy the competition. It's a great metaphor. Great metaphor. Yeah. In, in lieu of candy, they had filled the pinata with dollar <laughs> coins, all right? So first guy up. He's deep personality on steroids, maybe literally. Yeah. I mean, I could just see him. The, oh, the, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's in the box. He, he's, he's digging over in. The corner. He's warming up, right? <laughs> he's stretching the leg kick. Oh, yeah. He pulls oh, yeah. out the Louisville slugger and proceeds yeah. to knock this pinata in the next week, and yeah. it explodes. Dozens of dollar coins flying everywhere, and one guy in the front row takes one in the forehead. <laughs> he goes down like a sack of potatoes. He's yeah. down for the count. So, hey, I, what I'm thinking is there's a metaphor there. Not only uh -huh. do you destroy the competition, but That's sometimes right. you have to be willing to do what it takes. Somebody's got to take <laughs> one for the necessary. team. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that was what the boss was trying to uh, try to communicate. Oh, oh man, so, what a nightmare. So, same guy. He he tells his story on NPR. And then he comes back and he said, by the way, you can find these articles, our show notes linked to our page every week. So go to countermentors.com and go to the episodes page. And when, when we actually put the episode up live, right, or uh, the pod, yeah, you'll see all of our show notes. But he, he becomes the guy who does it. He goes, now I'm the guy. I'm the manager who sets up the team building activities. So it, it's interesting. <laughs> this guy goes on to say that uh, you, you, 
things tend to backfire, son. Sometimes yeah, the best typically. intention things. So several years ago, things didn't go well for this one guy when his former employer bust his division to a suburban Washington, D.C. field field office. They were divided into teams for a round of paintball. I, I don't know how that this got through. I, I, yeah. <laughs> This is this is not good. Like, yeah, how did this make it through corporate governance? <laughs> isn't this really like what you would see like out of the office or something? Like, can, can you imagine Michael Scott and Dwight Schrute going? Oh to play yeah. Oh yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it would have been the best episode ever. Well, there is a great episode of Office you can share with us in a minute. Yeah, we'll talk about that. So, in a so, dude says we were issued safety goggles and paintball guns, one of which immediately misfired, <laughs> hit a district <laughs> manager right in the crotch. <laughs> What what a great way! What a great way to kick uh, off! Quite literally, kick it tell off. Me, yeah. Tell me <laughs> yeah. that video if they had one wouldn't have gone viral in like twelve seconds. Uh, yeah, he says he remembers the game quickly devolving into screaming, pleading, and retaliatory rage. The paintballs left large welts. Oh my gosh! All right. A I lot of people point. Here's what here's a guy's quote. A lot of people pointed their guns right at their supervisor, me included. I shot my supervisor in the middle of the back. He spun around with revenge in his eyes. Now, oh my God. how would you characterize the bus ride home? Um, uh, okay, uh, awkward, um, pen drop, um, yeah, uh, daggers, dead, like dead lots of eye silent. daggers. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah dead yeah. silent. He says, I think we were all really unprepared at the impact, literally, emotionally and physically, <laughs> physically, the impact of shooting paintballs <laughs> each yes. other. Like now, I could see, I could see like customer service and sales enjoying that, like a customer <laughs> service versus sales situation. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Sales and operations. There are, you go. Sales and ops. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, boys. Oh, my Saddle God. up. What a nightmare. <laughs> oh, well, Lord. it gets, it gets, I know it's, it's going to shock you. It better it, or worse? It, I don't know. I don't well, it depends know. on how you look at it, That's right? right. That's it gets better or worse, depending on how you look at it. So there are some CEOs, weekend warrior types, and they like to engage in a subcategory of bad team building exercises called extreme. Yeah. Anything extreme. outside, anything involving harnesses, I'm in. Like, sign me up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, let's go walk on coals and burn ourselves. <laughs> which which happened, by the way, recently at a Tony yeah. Robbins event. That's yes, it did. And like, he did actually burn his feet, but that's neither here nor So there. this guy talks about a, a retreat that happened um, not too long ago in uh, New York. The company he worked for was clearly in financial straits, full of dissent and discontent. Shocker there. But but the guy said the CEO <laughs> hoped to find salvation through group inspiration and seemed eager to appear cool and edgy to his young 20-something, my word, millennial staff. I think in order to win people back on his favor, quote, he started going around and trying to hand out drugs. <laughs> <laughs> to be... <laughs> To be I mean, when all is failed, just you know, get, get yeah. your people hopped up. Hey, you yeah. know, you millennials, you're yeah. bunch. Oh, you, well, you told me what? What? What is it? You, you said you're dopers. You said you're dope. Anyway, no, we don't. We don't. We don't say dope. You say, you've That's, said it like you know, three times. You we said say we something dope. is cool. It's dope. I oh my god, dope is cool. That's on. I raised you better than just that. Okay. Like, just like tight is was cool. Now it's not cool. So the tight's you, when you put on about eight pounds. That's tight. Yeah, okay. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. So the C the CEO goes. He he starts handing out literally mushrooms. Uh, uh, certain kind of mushrooms. I can't even pronounce this long. That name. word is psychedelic, is what you're saying. Yes, yeah, psychedelic. Yeah. Uh, I have an so, okay. so at this point, about half the staff is arguing about who has it worse at which job and how we're getting screwed, and the other half's doing mushrooms. And and so uh, <laughs> by the end of the evening, uh, it's pretty much a train wreck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They have half the staff climbed up on the lifeguard stand. Some are wading into the ocean. I mean, it's, yeah. it's P.S. P.S. The business closed about 60 days later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Primarily because they were all on drugs. Um, and so, yeah, talk about Pretty an experience. Much. Oh, it's, I'm thinking somebody must have got busted along the way. I mean, just the stories you hear, you know, we, we were on Twitter asking this question. We got some responses like, what's your worst team building story? And we got stuff all across the board. Sit in a room with people you don't know and say your biggest fear. And you have an awkward facilitator that's like pushing you, like having a Freudian psych session, you know, in front of all of your peers. Uh, that's a that's a brilliant idea. Um, we, ha we had people, you know, talking about um, going off sites and, you know, of course, the trust falls and things like that. Um, but well, speaking of trust fall, I, I, I decided to go uh, Google trust falls so I could get a good YouTube video of yes. one not working out well. And, yeah. I, and I found one. I'm sure you found dozens. I, oh, I can yeah. only imagine all the. Oh my yeah, God. because, Robbie, think about it now. Let's 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 get serious. You and I for just a moment, because <clears throat> hold on, let me, this is okay. this is this is how we roll. We want to be serious. 
There's yeah. just nothing like turning around backwards and falling blindly into someone's arms to make you a better employee and work better together at work. Come on, admit it. Even you can admit that. Uh, you know, Kelly, in the uh, 47th uh, district of the 12th book of uh, the APA, we talk about the importance of physical. I mean, I can't even do it. I, this, is, this is just so terrible. Like, I don't. Uh, what are people thinking? Like, if they're I on really the podcast, don't... they didn't get to see you button up your I'm button. I'm sorry. Yeah, I buttoned and, my top button and got all serious. It looked like a complete goober, but. I was really smart. Cut me some slack. Um, but what, if you if you don't watch The Office, um, it's such a great like parallel of the modern workplace, the four generation like chaotic workplace. Um, but there's an episode where uh, the, the general manager, the branch manager, is moving on. So he is he figured out a way to select his replacement is not based on who does a great job, who is most oh, qualified. No, he no. does he does essentially a beach day. Uh, so it was part team building, part competition to see who he was going to select. So top, would you call that a top five episode? Oh my I gosh. Mean, it was screaming uh, funny. uncomfortably funny. Like, yeah, okay. I, I, oh my gosh. I can't even watch that show. As you well know, I get the, so uncomfortable. The things, the things that they, they brought in the, um, you've all seen the inflatable, uh, sumo wrestler where you run and run into each other. You that was that. so awesome. The egg now pop. listen, if that was the team building activity, it wouldn't do anything to help build our team, but it'd be fun and heck. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. So we all know that there are these just absolute nightmare scenarios of team building. And I think the big problem is uh, we have to take a step back and think about what's going on in these and why aren't they going well? Yeah. Here, so, here's here's I my mean, question, Robbie. It's kind of like last week when we did meetings. Who doesn't freaking know that meetings are a train wreck, too? Right. Do, do and your performance reviews. Not do people not know that these team building activities blow? I mean, people come back and they want to kill each other or yeah. they, you know, they talk for three weeks about how awkward it was. Or, I mean, you know, how many people actually come back from these? Two, and, and I'm sure it happened. And by the way, we're going to show you how to make it. Happen, Absolutely. Right? We are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And but, we have some good examples, too. I'm, I'm sure sometimes people come back and actually work better together. Yeah. But. I, why do companies do this nonsense? I mean, is it because they think or they've heard that, well, if we're going to be a better team, why we need to get out and get to know each other. And the best way to get to know each other is to put on a sumo wrestling suit and yeah, I, some I, crap. I, I don't get, I mean, so here, here's what we know for sure. We know that val employees that feel valued, engaged employees that feel valued are higher, you know, are more motivated or more productive. We see that over and over and over. We can bring out loads of research that says when you have an engaged workforce that feels valued, I mean, all of your metrics are better. Like it, it, it's at this point, it's beyond dispute. Like you can't argue with a, if your workforce is engaged, you will have a higher multiple on earnings, on ROI, I mean, on everything. So Absolutely. I think that it, in the, the fool's errand of chasing that, uh, organizations that don't truly value their people and want to put a Band-Aid on something that they think well, so we can say, hey, we our people are valued. They do these types of activities. It's right. not something that's thought through. I mean, I think of one of my uh, uh, companies that I used to work for that I absolutely love, Slalom Consulting. It They do something awesome. So I, I helped start the office in Boston. And when you reach profitability as an office, these are all the offices around the country. When you reach profitability, you get a weekend trip for you and your significant other. The whole office goes on a weekend trip. Wow. So, Yeah. And we um, in in Boston, it was it, they've moved it around some, but it was up in Maine. Uh, they're talking about doing Newport, and but you go and you spend a weekend just doing fun stuff. Like there's no work, there's no. It's just it's a congratulations. We did it, and, and you choose those things yourself, or do you they choose, assign your activities? Th you, there's basically a menu, so it's like okay, from from noon uh, from eight to noon, you know, breakfast is from eight to nine, and then from noon to or nine to noon, you can kayak, you can play golf. You can go to the spa, you can, you know, whatever you choose what you want to do and then you all have lunch together as, as a big team. And then you choose what you want to do in the afternoon. And then there's a big dinner that night. And th then the next day you're basically on your own, but you but have, that's, a that's, that's actually less team building than it is simply reward and encouragement for working hard. Right. And, and the, the, the payoff is you build some relationships even more significantly. But, but isn't that the point though? I mean, isn't that, that's something that you, uh, that, that no, you, the point is to go shoot your boss in the back with a paintball. That, that's what I'm saying. Like it, it's when people just try to put a bandaid on this, that, that they totally screwed up. Sure. Um, you know, we're going to get into this a little later about how to make it good, but I think that's a great example of a company that does it really, really well. 
Everyone in the organization looks forward to that. Everyone wants to do it. It's an office's goal to get to hit profitability. So they get to do that because they hear about how awesome they are in other offices. So, right. I mean, I think that's a great example of doing it well. Um, but I mean, the reasons they fail, I mean, we've, we've talked about this. I think it's important, but you know, you have a, a, a terrible leader that doesn't understand what it means to value your people or engage your people. He or she reads an article or hears something and is like, uh, we need to go do trust falls. It's like, well, we need to go do a ropes course. That's, that's the other one we hear a lot. Yeah. yeah why? Because, because that's team building. Um, and, but well, the, you know, hey, maybe let's stop for a second. Maybe that's where we ought to start because some of the words that get thrown around, son, I think are just misnomers. When I think of building a team, which is team building in my book, but look, right, you know, I talk about right. building a team. There's a very specific process to actually create a team of people that sync well, mesh well, work well together and, and collaborate and communicate well. Right. Then there is the idea of relationship building or or having some time away from the office just to get to know each other a little better and build right. some knowledge of each other. I think that's what I, I, I don't think they're doing but either aren't one. Those I think one the, aren't those one and the same? I mean, don't. Well, in order no, to, not really. In order I mean, just because I know you better and know that you like this team and that team and this movie and, you know, that you and get to know your wife, does that necessarily mean you and I are going to work together better at the office? I mean, it can't hurt. I get that. I might, I might be a little more willing to communicate. So in that sense, I see some value. But what if I'm not very good at what I do? Or what if I don't communicate well naturally just because I know your name now or your wife or whatever. Is that yeah. going to make me a better player? No, but I think that it allows other people to, to relate to that person better. So I disagree on this. I think that w teams are all about relationships. Like, I mean, you, you, fundamentally you have to have trust. Uh, yeah, I absolutely to, agree with that. Right. Trust so, is the glue. No, question. It's absolutely the glue. And I think that how you build trust, again, we, we believe that respect, you know, is you, you have that baseline respect and then people either earn it above that or they kill it. Right. I mean, we talked about that uh, uh, early on, on the show. Right. Um, but I think my point of view on this is you can't build a team without relationships. So I think when you do those lunches together, those happy hours or those offsite events, those are helping you build that team because you're building those relationships. And I think there are right ways and wrong ways to do the latter. Um, yeah, yeah. I, but I think you can't, not that you can't have a high performing team, but I think you will have a more, a better team if you take the time to build relationships. That's why I think the except, ROI on it's huge. Except if we get off site and, and we find out more about each other and we decide we don't like each other, <laughs> then we've got problems. Sure. I mean, th there's absolutely that possibility, but I think at least then you can understand where that person's coming from, even if you disagree. I mean, I, I've definitely been involved in off sites and, um, you know, I've hosted lunches and events for, for people that work for me. And in those, I realized that I didn't like certain people <laughs> because yeah, of either their, yeah. their, their worldview or their paradigm or whatever, but at least I, I could appreciate that. And I could keep that in mind as we were working together. Right. Which, is, which is, especially as a leader is a mandate for a leader. You right. don't have to agree with the people that work for you. You have to learn to ex use their strengths and, and work on their weaknesses and those kinds of things and create a culture of engagement where they can do their That's best right. work. Well, let's That's look right. at either extreme then. Okay. Uh, and this is kind of a tricky question, but which would you rather have? You can't have anything in the middle. You got to right. have one or the other, right? right. You, you have five really highly talented, competent people that do their jobs very, very well. And yet they don't work well together and they don't have a lot of trust. Okay. On the far end of the other side, you've got five people who really get along, really communicate well, uh, a lot of trust involved. Uh, but they don't work well together because they're not very competent or they don't interact very well together. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's they, they just don't put the five pieces together, even though they right. like each other. Right, 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 Which right. one would you rather have? That's tough. I mean, if, yeah, if, you're, talking about, if you're talking about there's a, there's no technical knowledge in, in the latter group, like you just you physically cannot get the job done. Then then I mean, of course, I would have to say that the, the first group, however, I'm going to choose a group that functions well, that trusts each other because that team is always going to get the job done. Here's why they have each other's backs. So yeah. if person three and four are failing persons, one, two, and five are going to come together, come along those folks, let them, they have the back, help them get through it. And if they all truly trust each other and have each other's back, those weak links, if you will, will want to be stronger to be part of the group. So, Absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, my gut is to choose the latter group. Uh, I mean, because I think that you can do more with that. If you have a bunch of rock stars that are all individuals and not a team, you're never going to be able to do as much. I mean, there's all sorts of cheesy phrases about I and team and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I, I just think that a team that truly trusts and ha there's a relationship there that matters. That matters to me.
Dude, no. have you have you seen the T-shirt where it has the word team on the front or the back, and right in the middle somebody's put an I and it on underneath it says, "Okay, that takes care of that." <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's something a, a a D personality would do. So oh yeah, absolutely. That was probably something you and your boys did. Hey, so, stay with us. It's Counter Mentors. Uh, you can follow us online at Counter Mentors on Twitter. Twitter. Find us online on our website countermentors.com. Robbie and I'd love to get your comments, your questions, and your ideas about future shows. KR at countermentors.com. Send us your email. Of course, you can send us a direct message on Twitter as well. Make sure you follow us. Hey, stay with us. Right after a quick timeout, I'm going to come back and tell you about a real live team building opportunity that uh, we took advantage of and tell you how it turned out. Stay with us. Welcome back, Countermenters. It's uh, Kelly Riggs and Robbie Riggs, Boomer versus Millennial, kind of old and busted, new and hotness out there. Yeah, your words, your words, buddy, not mine. Your words. Well, I, I, I enjoy being new hotness. You know, it's disappointing to me that you're old and busted at your age, but it is what it is. See, you're making assumptions. I hate that. All right. <laughs> so I had a client, son, and uh, this particular client uh, had, had all the personality problems that you would expect that we're, we're talking about when somebody's looking to create a team building exercise right. they had those kinds of problems they had three distinct silos engineering manufacturing and uh yeah. you know all the administrative people sales customer service support and all that kind of thing and uh whenever anytime they had a problem or anytime they had a problem with a customer you know what happened everybody blames everybody else and because there's no relationships and clearly no trust it was uh, the blame game uh out of control so what they wanted to do was to begin to create these relationships uh, so that people would begin to trust one another. Well, that's the kind of thing that you and I do on a regular basis. Unfortunately, the, the challenge was they wanted to have meetings with each of the individual groups. And I'm like, fellas, yeah, that's what good is that going to do? You're going to strengthen those walls in between. Them. Yeah, hey, all you're going to do is sit and talk about how bad the other people are. So we that's eventually... Right put three groups together, but each group had a third of each of that uh, team was involved. So all three teams represented in each of three groups. And over the course of time, we began to create this understanding and respect here. Here's what's really interesting and the, where it ties into last week's episode, which if you missed it, uh, I freaking hate meetings was a great episode. If I do say so <laughs> myself, uh, I know Robbie would say, so I'm just beating him to it. Okay. Yeah, that's, um, true. that's true. These guys, when they came to meetings, they always came late. 80, 90% of people came to meetings late, which is not unusual. A lot of people do it. But then the, when we got to talking, when we started that dialogue and people began to communicate with each other, the number one thing that came out is, you know, we don't respect each other around here, which is just another word for trust. But, uh, you know, yep. we don't respect each other. So I said, yep. well, let me ask you guys a question. One of the things I've noticed is that we're always late to meetings. I mean, I do three of these a, a month and 80% of the time people are late. Let me ask Never you a simple time. question. Yeah. Never on time. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Do you think if someone has organized a meeting, let's say it was is you, do you think it's respectful of you to come 10 minutes late? And they said, no, no, that's not respectful. I said, okay, so let's do this. Here's one very tangible thing that we can work on, that we can show each other that we're prepared to invest in that respect and trust. Let's decide today that we're going to come to meetings on time every time. All right. And they were like, yeah, 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 we can do that. And I said, now, right. look, I'm not naive. There's going to be times when you're late. But what does a respectful person do if they're late? They let someone know they're late. <laughs> hey, and yeah. by the way, if you're a few minutes late and you didn't, you know, it was totally unexpected, then right. what a respectful does, person does is come in and apologize and say, hey, I, my apologies. Sorry to interrupt. I'll get caught up somewhere else. Let's move along. And 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 so they did that. And it and it readily transform that organization just because not because they started making people come to meetings on time, but because people wanted to be respectful of each other and demonstrated it. And it, and it started them down a path of team building. Right. And that's a real right. example of something that really works. And we didn't right. go shoot anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this is the part of the show where I get to make fun of the pops for being an old guy um, pops, you know, for people that are binging our shows when they listen to pod, you know, three or four pods in a row. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they heard that story last week. I mean, you're, you're, you, we gotta, we gotta get fresh on our stories, pops. But, I mean, but, but, but you but, told me that was a great story. It, oh, well, I should have, I should have been a little more clear in my communication there, but <laughs> no, it's a perfect, <laughs> but see it's a perfect how example. I take the same story. Now I gotta, uh, you guys listening, uh, take a break for a second. I gotta teach my son something. Thank you. <laughs> he says it's a great story. Hey there on Blab. Thanks for joining us on Blab, by the way. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, this is how you take a real world scenario, son, and use it to teach people. That's how that works. Um, I have an MBA. I mean, an MBA. I'm, hang <laughs> I'm hanging out with you too. Man. No, that is a great example. You know, I had a former client, um, and we uh, we were working heavily with their IT department. And one of the things that they did that that was the best team building thing, uh, I think, and they didn't even realize it was a team building thing. They thought it was a knowledge sharing thing. Yeah, isn't that interesting? But, I like. They it. would take they would take all of their you know IT folks, whether it was infrastructure, operations, or application development, and they would go and do a tour of the warehouse. This was a distribution company, so th they're doing all of these things for you know speaking this language of distribution, and a lot of these people. Are, are tech guys. So they'd never even been in a distribution center and they would go to a distribution center, 10 or 12 of them. They'd come back, they'd do a debrief. And that was consistently, we heard one of the favorite days of the year because they got to go and actually see what they're doing and how it made an impact. Again, Absolutely. huge opportunity to bring a team together, you, leveraging an experience where they can go on that field trip together. They, they had lunch together. They talked about it. So another great example of how you can do something that is knowledge based where you're knowledge sharing. You're not just going in, you know, playing paintball, but you're actually doing something that furthers uh, the growth of the organization. And, and they loved it. And people Absolutely. thought it was a great experience. They felt like they could actually do something. So hey, a, yeah, I think another a great, great example, instead of spending all that money on, you know, paintball or fire or whatever, have your salespeople as an example, take your customer service people out on some sales calls exactly and, right. and, and introduce yeah. them, take them out for that lunch that they think you have every day and that you're spending two hours and doing right. a three martini lunch, but playing you know, golf. take them yeah. out. Yeah. I'm playing golf. Yeah. Right. You know, they begin to experience some of the real world out there and they believe that you care enough about them to expose them to that. That's how you begin to build teams. That's exactly my, right. My example, son is a long time you know, guy who, played sports, uh, coached uh, football for many, many years is the way you build teams in sports. And by the way, don't, don't turn us off because I said the word sports, uh, you can apply sports exactly. Analogy. Uh, uh. He's, he's a man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, he, a, a great, um, another great example, very similar is people who do like Broadway plays or orchestras or whatever. Mm -hmm. The way they build that team cohesion and unity is the same thing a sports team does. And it begins with training and practice and interaction with each other, yeah. learning about what each other's strengths and weaknesses are. So, right. I mean, you know, these, these guys go out on a daily basis. So I have, I have another great article for, for us to peruse hey, here. Hold, hold on. Before we jump into that, I'm going to totally derail us off of our, um, off our script here. Okay. Um, we, had a, we had a question on blab and I think it's a really good one. So I want to, I want, I want to address it really quick. So, okay. uh, at Brad underscore Gallagher asks us, what do you do when you have a great team? And where they have great technical skills and they have great cohesion, they trust each other, they have great relationships, but they have a bad leader or manager. So, Br Brad, I'm assuming that you are on that team and you guys have a bad manager. So, so Pops, let's get your, your opinion first. I, what, I what have an think? answer. Yeah. What, what do you think? What does he do? You take the boss. Ready? You take the boss paintballing. Okay. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Go that's paintballing. Right. Accidentally on purpose. Accidentally. Discharge yeah. that paintball. No, that's, right. that's a really good question, and uh, you'd be surprised how often it comes up, Robbie. I'm sure you're the same, but in, in the clients that I work with, yeah. typically mid-managers want to know how to deal with a, their manager who they feel is is not as good as they should be. Right. And, and there are a lot of ways to deal with that. You learn to manage up. When you know what, what's important to the boss, and you know, when he says bad leader manager, he could be describing a hundred different issues. Right. So it's right. really hard to say, here's a one size fits all. But if, 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 for instance, I've got a bit of a micromanager tyrant boss who wants to be in the know all the time, then I just feed him information as hard as I can. Right. And, and I have a team that's working. I, my last corporate gig, the guys that I worked for uh, probably fell in that category. They weren't very effective as leaders, smart guys, right. you know, but weren't very effective as leaders. My job was to create an effective team and a group of people that I managed. Mm -hmm. And I gave these guys what they wanted so they could be happy. It, it was harder for me. It was more work. It was more difficult to do the job. But my responsibility was to my team. Managing up is, has got, a, as you, I'm sure you're going to share with us, has got a lot of different yeah. perspectives. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, that's a, I think that's a really good perspective, Pops. I think um, a, a, an easy answer to that question from a tactical perspective, uh, Brad, is – 
understand to what the pop said, understand what it is, the outcome that your manager wants. If that's to look good or that's to have all the information or that's to feel like they're in control, whatever that is. And then you as a team can work to provide that to the manager. And, and then over time, you can start to pull back that curtain so the manager can see all the great work that's going on without him or her being into the weeds. So, um, but first and foremost, understand what outcomes, what, what expectations your, uh, this, this bad leader or manager has, and then you can really work to kind of figure out what level of detail you need to provide him or her uh, without feeling like you're um, really derailing everything. So I think it's a great question. You know, look, this is this is one of our favorite. This is why we do this show live on Blab yeah. because it makes it so much more fun and, and interactive. So, um, at Brad, I wanna, hey, I want I want to share a little nugget. Uh, this this yeah. comes directly from my dad. So you think I'm old guy? You just just going up the the row there. But that's the man. Uh, popo. This is the yeah. pops, and that's the popo. That's yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> uh, here here's what he used to tell me that I've always uh, used and told other people. He used to say, "There's nothing like a nervous boss." especially when you're the one making him nervous. <laughs> hey, and he's a military guy too. So he's I can only, military guy. you know, that had to come out of some military thing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. absolutely. Anyway, right. Great question, Brad. Uh, again, we love to get questions in. Send us a note. KR at countermentors.com. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it on the show. We'll talk about it directly one-on-one. Uh, you know, th- obviously we love doing this. So pops, for I do an enormous that. fee, we'll come and work with your leader. Okay. Uh, enormous. <laughs> <laughs> How's that shameless plug? That's right. That Five was, reasons that why your team building session failed. Okay. Oh, here this is go. actually written by the founder and chief executive officer of a company called Shrewd Analytics. And I wanted to share this with you because it really had some good, good pieces. So one of the problems with, with team building issues and sessions that yeah. makes it go sideways is that you're trying to create effective learning under conditions that have nothing to do with the conditions they'll face when they go back to work. Right. right. So you don't learn how to be better teammates and more effective with each other by going out and working on a ropes course necessarily. What you'd like to do is something that is near to what you would be doing as possible. And yeah. so it, yeah. it makes it's, a lot of difference. It makes me think of that phrase. It's not practice makes perfect. It's purposeful practice makes perfect. Right. Or makes perfect. practice Absolutely. purpose makes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, the other thing is key team members don't buy into the whole idea. Statistics we saw is at least one out of three of every yeah. employee surveyed hates these freaking team building activities because they're done wrong and they're not productive and right. they don't really further the job and make us better. Right. It, it's more like being embarrassed. So right. most people don't want to look foolish. Technical team members are perhaps most likely to be demotivated by activities for which they do not perceive any kind of value. All right. 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 N- number three, team building skills are not even reinforced. Team building is all well and good for two to four hour time span during which it takes place. But when it's over, we go back to work. We had a phone call with a client about this today, talking about the difference between, you know, having a two to four hour session. But if you don't have follow up, you don't reinforce those skills. it, it, It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, yeah we, we just had that conversation today. That's a very real challenge people face on a daily basis. Yeah, let me pull one more out of this one before we uh, start talking about how to do it right. Team building tries to take the team out of team building. Many team building sessions attempt to classify team members, right. uh, like in terms of a personality type or a communication type or something like that. So I, I love this line. Activities that classify you as a wolf or a swan or a dog or a snake <laughs> or, or other animal right. in a menagerie are one such example. All right. Think for a minute of a team of rowers in a, in a racing boat. No matter how much rowing an individual does, no matter how good that individual's attitude is, no matter what your intentions are, good or bad, if the rest of the team is not pulling in the same direction, uh, you've got a problem. A good team right. is w- is one in which everybody works together. And sometimes you have to set aside your own personal wants and wishes to make the team better. I, th- I think that's one of the real problems and something we're not even going to talk about in today's episode, maybe in the future, is how do compensation systems impact teams and team building as well? There, There's a key for you. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it, well, yeah, that, that, that's a whole other Ball, uh, ball of wax because you talk about what behaviors are you incenting with with your incentive plan uh what behaviors aren't you incenting that are actually you should be incenting so that's a whole other whole other challenge i mean so i think that we've pretty much in 40 minutes described uh, that that generally speaking like annual performance reviews like meetings people <laughs> screw up team building you and- know people I, there, are people gonna hate us all we do is run down <laughs> Run down what's going on. You guys are so arrogant. You think you know everything. Um, no, no, no. No, actually, we're, we're reading. Only millennials do that. I'm yeah. not like that. Okay, oh, yeah, just yeah. put that on Robbie. Yeah. No, what, what, what we're responding to is 
ridiculous amounts of research, both personally right. Right. and quantitatively by other organizations that say all these things are freaking That's broken. Right. That's right. That nobody wants to change, which, by the way, happens to be your bailiwick, isn't well, it? Well, yeah, I mean, it, helping helping organizations transform is important because people don't know how to do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Emporo just said, thank you for not using the term incentivizing. Apparently, he's over that buzzword. So we, we, we're not going to talk about incentivizing. Well, not, not to mention the fact it's not even a, well, a word per se. It's kind of a made-up word. There's that, too. There's that. Little the next dictionary comes. Irregardless. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So I want, I want to transition because what this is really about is about teaming. It's about building great teams. And we found a really, really good article this week uh, from entrepreneur.com, uh, one of our favorite sites, being entrepreneurs. We, we, we definitely uh, subscribe to that and have some really, really good stuff on hey, there. By, by the way, son, let me mention for people listening in. Yeah. The reason we bring the articles to you is not because we can't think on our own. What we want to do is give you a reference so that you can go see and read the materials as well. We take the good parts out. We leave the crap away that we don't like we just kind of present it so hold on this isn't fair because if i would have said that you'd have been like oh well you know millennials are just lazy and the reason you do that's because you're lazy and you don't want to so blah, here's, blah, 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 blah. here's the thing if you copy from one person it's plagiarism if you copy from tons of people it's just research <laughs> i love that trademark <laughs> i don't know how but i we didn't trademark that <laughs> i'll um, teach you son. it's no, a tm it's it's tough but we'll I figure it know. out i don't know how that works um but this is a great <laughs> article it's called 10 insights on building motivating and managing an exceptional team and that's what this is about team building the the uh, ultimate objective is not yeah to, not team building activities no actually teaming building a team yeah. it's create a a uh, collaborative group of people with disparate uh, abilities, points of view, and put them going in the same direction, right? We Absolutely right. Towards a goal that they wouldn't otherwise do naturally themselves. Um, so th this is actually a really good article. The reason it's such a good article and the reason we, we wanted to use this one is it links to a ton of studies. So yes. everything they have is backed up by research, which we love when articles do that because it makes our research a little easier. That's the millennial <laughs> coming out of me. Research, um, yes, research. That's right. That's right. So uh, the, first, the first thing is team building can work like it, it actually can work that, that was the number one insight on building managing and motivating an exceptional team um remember people that feel valued are motivated right hbr has done uh, they wrote a great article on that that's referenced in, uh, in this article but there's all this research that shows us um uh, ucf the college of business there did a very very deep study into uh motivating people and how team building works and can work at it from a performance in their research, they found that there is a statistically significant difference in organizations that have focused on building teams. So, Pops, I think it goes, again, according to this article, according to the research at UCF, team building can work if you do it right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The reason that it doesn't work typically in an organization, son, I mean, I love using analogies and giving people illustrations that they can ha hang on right. to. Right. Sports is one of those. You look at a right. football or basketball team. Right. You can look at a Broadway play and all of the different pieces that have to work perfectly. Right. I mean, uh, you, you, our family and your family went together uh, to New York City on uh, Christmas Day a couple of years ago, and we went to see Phantom of the Opera there on Broadway in New York. Awesome. And just to see how they put that together, everything yeah. has to be perfect. Every person has to play their role perfectly, That's from right. the person selling the tickets, cleaning the aisles, printing the magazines, you know, and not to mention the performance and the music and the lights right. and the choreography. Right. It, that when you look at those things, you say, how do these people do this? Well, let me, let me make it simple. Yeah. They train yeah. and they practice. That's exactly right. Over they train and, and they practice. And over and, over. <laughs> and, and, right. and we want to substitute for training and practice, what you purposeful practice, as you put it. Right. We want to substitute a one day offside event where we go shoot each other. Come right. on, really? Right. Yeah, I mean, it, the reason team building has a bad reputation is because of how terrible it is. The examples we talked about at the beginning, I mean, some some really, really poor examples. Uh, Pops, you mentioned the research. 31% of office workers say they can't stand team building, right? One in yep. three can't yep. stand it. Um, but remember, uh, as, as we've seen over and over, um, if you are valued, you are more motivated to do more. So yes. it, that, 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 there, there's a fine line there. And, and whose responsibility is it to make you feel valued? It is the boomers. I mean, the leaders' uh, responsibility. To I'm glad that. you recognize that the boomers are the leaders. We are always the leaders. We no, would was, not give such an important uh, function. Uh, yeah. Anyway, moving on. We're, we can argue about that later. <laughs> um, we're, we're, we're running up against time. All right. So the, the second thing in this article is there's five what they call the five best activities. Um, so if you're going to do team building, this article references volunteering, doing something physical outdoors uh, so where it pushes you, field trips, professional development. And of course, Pops, our favorite thing to do is to eat together. 
right? Just Never go eat alone. Share brother. a meal. It's great stuff. Never eat alone. Number three, I That'd love a great. Book, I love I this one. It would make a great book. Number three, <laughs> great teams need non-work communication. So this and that's, from, what, that's kind of what you were talking about earlier when exactly you were right. Right? That's exactly right. So this is a study from MIT. It shows that when it comes to pr predicting the success of a great team, the most important element is how well the team communicates informally. Um, and it, it's really interesting to see that that informal communication is molded from uh, shocker relationships. You have to know each other. You have to get it. So um, encouraging your people uh, to have good informal communication, which so often comes from non-work communication. Okay, so so let me let me let me drop a, something in here and ask you. Mm -hmm. So you're a millennial, a millennial. I'm a boomer. We, we see things similarly, but obviously our perspectives are quite different in terms right. of the way we were raised and all those kinds of things. Right. But when you talk about communication, I don't get the sense that you're talking about text or, you know, I, I, I my sense is you're talking about actually, especially in terms of sharing a meal, sitting across from somebody and having a meaningful conversation, a dialogue, right, right. You know, going to a ball game together, or doing something together where you can actually eyeball each other. And that is that is that fair or are, are we including things like texting each other from joining offices or, you know, whatever. No, I, uh, so that's tough for me because I think absolutely, yes, the, the latter builds the former, but I think you have to have that relationship in order to do the informal, the texting, the leaving a sticky note on your desk, the uh, I am the, you know, whatever. So right. I think it's, a, if you have that good relationship, you're much more comfortable. I'm much more comfortable shooting someone a text that says, Hey, going to be five minutes late. Right. Whereas I'm just more comfortable shooting someone. Well, that's because you're a grumpy old man. We have, we have talked about this over <laughs> and over and over. So I'm getting better. I'm getting the better. Importance of, you know, being able to have that informal communication is key. Um, they, they, they go through some other things. Rock stars are often dependent on the team. Uh, remote teams can outperform local teams, which I, I thought that was interesting. The way that, that they is looked at that, yeah. like, I, I don't know that I totally agree with that, but that, that, I, I think well, it again, people. it comes back to how you do it, right? I mean, yeah, if you're people, just putting in remote teams because you're supposed to. Yeah. So this next one, number it was number six on this on this ten list is in person brainstorming is not the best option. And I, I'm reading this article and I just went, what? I, I I couldn't believe it. I was like being it being the being extrovert that loves to collaborate. I couldn't believe it. And they referenced some research and they talked about um, this this new wave called electronic brain writing. Essentially, it's brainstorming on a collaboration site. So you're basically yeah, like what, Slack or Basecamp exactly, or something like that. Exactly, hip chat. There's there's a ton of them. So um, I, I don't know that I agree with that, but I, I think the the article kind of puts it into perspective. The challenge. Well, uh, uh, to be fair, it's not yeah. saying it doesn't work. It's the saying it's not is, always the best option. Yeah, it's it's yeah. generally a, a bust when it comes to generating the best, most novel ideas. You right. know, one of the problems in in and I don't know what the control groups are in these kinds of studies, but one of the problems is many brainstorming sessions are like meetings and team building and everything else. Maybe we'll <laughs> tackle this one down the road. Most brainstorming <laughs> sessions right. are just a disaster anyway. Right. So. Right. Right. When you're comparing to that, I can get it. Now, now, pops, no ideas are bad ideas. Okay, they're all good. <laughs> I, I think they're we all should. Good. I think we should have four-hour lunch hours. Yeah, that, done. <laughs> that was that was a great idea. <laughs> Moving on. Millennial, all millennials say that's I. Right. I'll, that's right. Well, no, they'll they'll, they'll text. Um, they'll text you that their, their <laughs> vote. Um, number seven. This is great. Um, the importance of an analytical thinker on your team. This is huge. Uh, I this, love this part. This goes to you know what you and I have beat to death many times on the show. But a great leader puts together a team of all the different styles. Uh, whether you're yep. looking at personality style, communication style. But but this is part of it. You can't have a whole bunch of extrovert, salesy type people on a team and be and reach the highest levels of performance compared to a team that has all the different styles of thinking. Um, yeah, but the and you know what the problem with that is? is? It's important. The, the problem with that is, is usually that analytical thinker is uh, a, a reserve personality. Right. They're not going to raise their hands and say, hey, this is a problem. That right. means that the, the, the leader in particular and the other team members have to value that individual. But, but having that analytical thinker that kind of keeps the, the D and I personalities from it's running key. off the rails, absolutely critical in my it's book. It's key. Uh, shout out to my man, Ken Wilkins, uh, my uh, business partner. Uh, we founded Sanasano Consulting together, and, and th that's he and I. I'm, I'm the big picture visionary. <laughs> Think outside Nobody the box. would have figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> and Ken is like, Robbie, we have to focus on this. So uh, I, I big, big, big uh, nod to him. Uh, Way he, big I, shout to my boy, Ken. Thanks for know, at least yeah, keeping him in the building. That's right. That's right. Uh, the, the, the next thing, number eight, microcultures are not good. So it talks about the challenges of creating clicks. So your microcultures within your team. Um, again, a result often of 
quote unquote team building activities is you have all the, what were you saying? Wolves and spiders and snakes. <laughs> Swans. I, don't know, I don't know what you were saying. Snowflakes. Um, I, I fell asleep during that part, but it, it's really important that when you do these activities, not to create those subcultures, you want to make sure that everyone is teaming together. Now, it doesn't mean that certain group people won't have better relationships than others, but you want to ensure that your team isn't creating multicultural. And it doesn't mean that everyone's not special, Robbie. Everyone's special. Um, my, I'm just, I just ignore these now when, when you do that. Um, the, no, Number nine, uh, quickly, teams. This I thought this was really interesting, and I knew yeah, this that is you, good. you would get a really big kick out of this. But absolutely, teams need social sensitivity. So yes, we need uh, to be sensitive. You need to be very sensitive. <laughs> yes, indeed. But I immediately pops. I don't know where your head went on this, but mine immediately went to um, Goldman and his whole emotional intelligence and your um, emotional quotient. Um, right. His, his you know groundbreaking article he wrote um, for HBR and later the book that he wrote. Um, but having that at high level of emotional intelligence and empathy and to use his word, sensitivity, incredibly important in creating a good team, uh, especially as a leader um, and, and, or a key influencer within the team. Hugely. Yeah, as much, as much as I hate to admit it, and it doesn't mean I won't continue to abuse the word, uh, it, it is sensitivity is, is, is important. Empathy is a better word for me. Right, right. Uh, Daniel Goldman, as you mentioned, talked about EQ, considers it that emotional quotient to be more mm. important than IQ. Right. And, and for leaders in particular, the research data all supports that dramatically, is that uh, you can be a you know, results at all costs kind of leader with no you know, interactive empathetic skills. Right. Your, your empathy skills, you're a real problem. But I, I think that's true. A guy like me needs to hear that because deep personalities don't tend to listen well. Right. They don't tend to hear other people's perspectives. They make up their mind quickly and they move along, which is a good strength, but it can also be a glaring weakness. I, well, I think it's your, really critical. Your analytical style is the same thing, right? They, they just, Absolutely. they're looking for facts and figures and not, and not emotions. And then the Absolutely. last one on this, before we jump to our, um, our, what, what, what we want to, our key takeaways. Um, the, and then again, this just, we've talked about this over and over the best teams, have introverts, extroverts, analytical, big picture. I mean, you have a round, well-rounded team. So uh, great article. Again, we'll post it. W the thing that's awesome about it is all the research that's linked within the, each one of those. So yeah, you know, that was a good article. We'll jump to our takeaways. We're right, we're right up against time here. So um, <laughs> team building is a train wreck, but team building is important. Having a high functioning team is important. So, so how do you do it? W what's your takeaways from today? Well, I think what we want to take away from this is it gets to be like you said, uh, if you listen to us every week, it may sound redundant. But if you're going to have introverts and extroverts, if you're going to have analyticals, if you're going to have sensitivity to everybody's input and all those kinds of things, great teams begin and end with a great leader. And 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 like, what I like to tell my clients is uh, great players won't play on bad teams. They won't play for bad leaders. Is they it, simply won't do it. Oh, I need to just really quick. Um, I know that we have some Oklahoma City Thunder fans that, that listen to our show. Um, was that it? Was that a knock on Kevin Durant and and, and the Thunder dad? Were, were you no, just, I mean, absolutely not, son. The, it, I, the coach is the leader. The coach. Oh, okay. All right. I, I'm just. I, 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 just I, was, I didn't know if that was like us. Uh, okay. All right. Don't don't be picking on people right. for those. You're rubbing salt in the wounds. <laughs> but that that's my takeaway. I, I think the other yeah. thing is is look. You, you can't fall prey to the uh, idea of the wheat club and somebody says, hey, you know, we really should go out and, uh, you know, go bowling together or something like that. Right. I, I'm not saying that's a bad idea. What I'm saying is until you figure out what your objective is and exactly what you're trying to accomplish, right. you don't go right. build better teams that way. You might build better relationships. If that's your objective, then turn it into something casual and promote that casual communication. But if you really want to build a better team, it's about practice and teaching people how to do their jobs well. Yeah, you know, for me, Pops, it, it goes back to individuals that feel valued by their uh, organization are more motivated to do the right thing and to go above and beyond. So I, I highly encourage whether you are a middle manager, a, a CEO, someone on a team, take it, take it on your shoulders as the person that, that does taco Tuesday or that does happy hour on Thursday, build that relationship because it's critical that after you work, build the relationship after, after work on the happy hour thing. Uh, okay, fine. Whoa, after work. Easy, after work. Easy. After work. So but, liability. But, but I think that that, uh, you know, having that non-work communication, ha having those informal channels that you can actually have a dialogue and you're comfortable shooting a text saying, hey, I need help on this. Uh, I mean, a lot of that's about, you know, pride of an individual, pride of a team. But I think building the relationship is where it starts. So take it upon yourself. Don't wait for someone else to do it. Take it upon yourself to help your team build a better relationship and come together. It's critical. Absolutely. That's great stuff. He's Boston Rob. 
Robbie Riggs. You can find him on Twitter at Robbie Riggs. I'm the Pops. Kelly Riggs at Kelly Riggs on Twitter. Together, we're Counter Mentors at Counter Mentors. We do this show every week at four o'clock. And we're, by the way, we're kind of thinking about maybe moving the time. So if you got any opinions uh, about that, make sure. sure you let us know. But 4 p.m. on Mondays, we do it right here live on Blab. Then you can find the podcast on our website, countermentors.com, or you can subscribe to iTunes exactly like we do. We love to do it that way. That's going to do it for the show. That's episode number 11. That baby's in the can. We want to invite you to uh, listen to the podcast. Come back and see us next time. By the way, next week, don't forget the new millennial approved workplace. David Burkus will be our guest. He's the author of Under New Management. And man, that is a fantastic book. We're going to talk about some crazy new workplace practices. And we're going to see if maybe millennials. Uh, crazy. Crazy. <laughs> That'll do it. We'll Y'all be next good. time on Counter Mentors. Come on! Thanks for tuning in to Counter Mentors with Kelly and Robbie Riggs. The show airs every Monday at 4 p.m. Central. Watch the show live on Blab or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. For more information about the show, to listen to past shows, or to learn more about how Kelly and Robbie teach companies the counter-mentoring process, visit countermentors.com. The Counter Mentor Show is presented by One on One Media, Incorporated, All Rights Reserved. Opinions expressed by guests on the show may not be the opinions of One on One Media or the host of the Counter Mentor Show.